Go placidly amid the haste and noise, and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible without surrender, speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others too. Even the dull and the ignorant, they too have their stories. It is on this note that I welcome you to this week's edition of the program, Truth to Power. I am Ehis Agbon. Truth to Power is a program that is designed to highlight issues and happenings in and around persecuted minority communities in Nigeria, most especially Middle Belt and Northern Nigeria. And today on the program, we will be looking at working in and around uh, persecuted communities, most especially collaborating with others and even relating with people around there. And our special focus today is going to be a cluster of IDP camp and of course, those persons that have worked around that cluster and their experiences working in those uh, clusters and of course, relating with people and maybe other groups and associations that are doing the same thing. On the last edition of the program, I had the CEO of Echo Smile Support and Empowerment Initiative, Ms. Blessing Echo Sunday on the program. This week, I still have her, and of course, another volunteer I will be joining her on the program this week. And I have someone that I, I personally don't call him, I personally call him the Triple J, that Job Julius Jato. He is a volunteer with Echo Smiles Support and Empowerment. Did I get that right? Echo yeah, Smiles Support, support and, and Empowerment and Initiative. I welcome you guys to the program this week. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, yeah. And now, do we have an IDP crisis in Nigeria? Because from recent um, studies, looking across all the areas where we have crisis in and around the Middle Belt and Northern Nigeria, conservatively, out of the estimated 200, over 200 million Nigerians, more than 10% of that number are said to be IDPs within Nigeria. Why we work hard to get you the hard facts and the data on this, on the actual true figure, which some say maybe more than 20 million? We will work with the estimates that we have. How bad would you say is IDP crisis in Nigeria? Do we have one? Do we have it? And to how bad is it? I'll start with uh, a blessing. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Blessing, like you know. <laughs> Yes, we have IDPs in Nigeria. We have IDPs in Kaduna State. If you look at um, the reports from Selma, yeah. in 2022, that there are 22,000 internally displaced persons in Kaduna State. Mm. Yes. So that's according to Selma. According to Selma, that's according the, to Selma. the ones that they agree that are IDPs. Yes. Because yes. among, well, in the, if Selma is in about 20,000. From my experience, I'll say 22, we have about uh, 22,000. 22, I'll, I'll say we have about 200,000 because most of them is just 10% of the true figure that the government actually cater for. All right. Okay, so um, what, we're, what we're currently doing with them is um, because of we know they have so many challenges, that is the IDPs. For example, the issue of medical care. Most of the IDPs are in need of medical support of which we know they don't they are not getting it mm -hmm. and then issue of feeding food is a major problem yeah some of the kids there will tell you i'd rather go back to my village well how can you go back he said that we have enough food he said auntie we don't struggle to eat in my village we have plenty of food we have farms of course you know they cannot go there yeah, they can. so the issue of hunger is one of the major problems with mm. the IDPs. Mm. And then even accommodation, where these people are staying, honestly, is not a place for human beings to stay, most of them. And even the ones that managed to secure a rented apartment, yeah. now, they are being chased, pay the rent, where will they get the money from? I have, when, one of the events we did, an old woman, that is one of the displaced, one of the IDPs, she said something, I have it recorded, she says since they give birth to her, that she has never seen this kind of thing. That since all her life she has been in the village, that now they are telling her, Mama, 
leave this place because she cannot pay. An aged elderly woman. Mm. I said, how much is the money? She said, 100,000 for accommodation. So issue of accommodation is one of the issues again. And then education as well. For we've started a program, the back to class for the kids, right? There are some more about the ones that are done with their secondary education. How do we help these ones yeah. to go back to school? They are already becoming nuisance in the society, the community where they are. Definitely, definitely. They are already becoming nuisance. Because these are people that we know they already they eat in large quantity. Yeah. Because they are mostly farmers. Yeah. So now they don't have that food. What do you expect? That is a big question that I think that we need to reflect on to decide what to do. Now, coming back to, uh, yes, now you have confirmed that indeed there's an IDP issue that we need to resolve. But first, how did it even come about people being internally displaced? Because if we look at the keywords, internally displaced is. person, meaning that right there in your homestead, your homeland, you are displaced in your homeland or environment. So sad. I'd like to come to Joe Julius Jato. <laughs> um, well, the issue of these uh, entirely displaced persons is is very very pathetic because you see, while um, to a very large extent, I will say that what led to this issue is to me, I think it's negligence in the part of the government. Okay. Yeah not taking care of their responsibilities. Mm. Because the first responsibility of every government is the protection mm. of, of life and, and property. property. Yeah. Now, the government has failed to provide that protection. And these people were terrorized mm. by a group of persons, which politically they call them bandits. I call them terrorists because these people, number one, they are they take pleasure in killing. Are they organized? Very, very organized. Okay. Yeah. Very, 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 very organized. These are not random attacks. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't count bullets. Hmm. They come like. For, uh, let me speak from the experience of some of these uh, IDPs yes, that I faced with. Yes. Well, um, some of them say that these people came in the middle of the night when they were sleeping, surrounded their homes and started shelling bullets in there. As they go out, the ones that survived, survived. The ones that died, died. Mm. So they ra ran into their farms. Thanks to God, they are, they, are, they, are, they are farmers. They ran and hid in their farms. Community proceeded. And some of them, if you notice that a particular person is has a bigger uh, house and everything, the second person is rich. So they take the person's wife and children. is compared to pay ransom. So, yeah. So by the time you pay the ransom, sometimes they release the the uh, the um, wife or the, children. Yes, or? Yeah, sometimes they release them. Sometimes they kill them. So you are not guaranteed that your loved ones return, even after, after, after pay. payment of, of ransom. Mm -hmm. You know, just a few days ago, uh, so, sorry, uh, some some two weeks ago, these people, these uh, terrorists, enter my community. They cut it away with. Uh, they, with like I think like seven, some people or so, they went with them, and before ransom uh, ransom was paid, mm. but they had killed the man was supposed to be the first person that ransom was paid on, on his behalf. He was killed. Mm. His son was released uh, later. I think to yesterday they, they just came back, but his older son, yeah. who was just around nine years old, they held him back and are going to train him to be a part of them. Wow. Yes. So as it is now, just like what used to happen in East Africa, where we had the the groups then harvesting young persons and training them to be child soldiers that, child soldiers. Would, that would only grow up to that way of life. It's already happened it's, right it's here in happening. our land. It's happening. Wow. It's happening. So I tell the government to do something about this. You've had it. Experiences from people that live in communities, people that interface with persons that are directly affected by the activities of these terrorists in our homeland. And it's high time the government does something about it. Because I wouldn't want a situation whereby everybody will start to pick up the arm to defend themselves. Because whether we like it or not, the first instinct of every living soul is self-preservation. And anybody will do anything to preserve themselves. All right. Still talking about experiences of persons in these IDP camps and um, survival. I know 
that many of them will need some high level of psychoanalysis and yeah. counseling. What's happening? Yeah, uh, uh, let me let me say a little here before she. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> well, well um, this is a very very central issue that we are facing. You know, some of these children they see they saw their loved ones being hacked to death, mm. and the trauma mm. has been very very serious. Like, but she interfaced with them first before me. Mm. So when she was she went uh, she was telling me that some of these children were very very. I was telling her, why are they so withdrawn? See, these people like they are much more, much more confident now. That Dying. way back when she, yeah. them, <laughs> was she approaching them, they are running away. They are scared because of that trauma. The trauma, you know, mm. of that trauma. And some of them, you never can tell. You at first, at first encounter, you can never tell how intelligent these children are oh, you, yeah. until yeah. eventually, after we had become like family to them, mm. then we are beginning to see. I'm a trained teacher. Though. Okay. So, I'm okay. To see, so you yeah, understand yeah, children's yeah. psychology? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. So see, uh, this is the, their their weakness. This is their strength, and then we try to use their strength to build their weakness. Mm -hmm. So they are very very. They are highly traumatized. Some of them, some of them, uh, go into these. Um, they take drugs because mm -hmm. you know if you want to get high, mm -hmm. you don't need money to get high. Really? If you want to, if you want to eat, that's why you have problem. So. Some of them are taking because you don't, you don't necessarily blame them for taking drugs. Some of them had never taken drugs until they until they became displaced. Mm. Because some of them were millionaires. Yes. Yeah. Some of them were millionaires. Yes. Yeah. So they were they cater for their families without effortlessly. They cater for their family. But now they are begging to survive. To feed is a problem. Imagine they, they cannot pay the fees of the children. Yeah. So they are traumatized as parents and as children. They are children are also, tra are also traumatized. When once a parent cannot take care of the needs of the children. He becomes. He doesn't have a voice. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's yes. a natural phenomenon. That that father figure is lost. It's lost. So these people are highly traumatized. So we try to, as you can see from the the shirt she's wearing, uh, dealing with depression. Mm. These things, they are, these things, uh, just it goes with uh, depression. Yes. As well. So yes. that yes. We, we try to we try to bring them close and make them understand. Personally, I lost my grandmother to this kind of violence. Mm. And I have lost a number of my friends to this drug abuse. So I'm using myself as an example. If I can stand strong and fight this, you can do it. It's not rocket science. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Though, you know, you cannot tell somebody not to do this if you cannot support it in the other yes, way. Yes, of course. That is telling. You know, nature avoids vacuum. Before you tell them to stop doing this, you must provide an alternative. alternative. If you cannot, then I'll say your options are really extremely limited. Now, I'll come to you now. Yeah. Interfacing with some of these women that has gone through trauma, mm -hmm. we know that when these persons come, they rape women, they do all yeah. sorts of things, and uh, sadly too, even, maybe not in the community where I work, they are um, actually doing something on um, children of the terrorists. I'm doing a stuff on it, it will be back soon on uh, Truth Nigeria, where that's young girls and women put in the family way by these terrorists. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, interfacing with some of these women that has gone through a lot of this, can you just share some experiences and tell us about some of the things you've learned or heard from them? Honestly, they, these, these are people that have been through a lot. In fact, I remember the first time uh, I met with them that we did the event. Okay, that when I celebrated my birthday with them on the second of May, this mm -hmm. twenty three, the whole place everybody was just crying because what? Madam, please can wait. What happened? Like that? If you the the, the the whole place, even the men, I couldn't even hold back my tears because it was, um, it was just something that a normal human being will not. If you want to listen to their story. Of course, you must cry. So these are women that have been through a lot. Some of them were raped. Mm. Some of them were raped. I, I know someone that was like, hmm. that what he saw, that's one of the IDPs. Mm -hmm. He said, what he saw? He said, bless you, you know something I'm going to tell you? That women, in that they were raped in front of oh God. So most of these women, they've been through a lot. Some of them were raped. They were raped. Some of them, are, we have widows among them. So many widows there. The husbands were killed. And what really pains me the most was, okay, because of hunger, now they have a community where they are staying, right? 
But because, of course, they need to eat. Yeah. Some of them left their community and went out. If I die, I die. If I survive, I survive. Why going to look for what the children will eat? Yeah. So there are a lot of things. I'm being mm-hmm. emotional at the moment because it's not story, story like a fairy tale. This is something. Mm-hmm. There's nobody that will go there and you won't cry except you don't want to listen to their stories. And like what I tell them, let's forget about yesterday. Yeah. We have a new day. Let's focus on the new day that we have. Mm-hmm. And that is why we need to engage some of them. Some of them are not doing anything. They need to be empowered. Like he was talking about the drug issue. Yeah. What do you do for a guy that is already used to farming? And then he knows that, okay, when I go to school, I mean, this is what I get at the end of the day. He goes to farm, gets the produce and then sell. No. This child does not have access to that farm now because it has been hijacked. They can't go there. So what do you expect? So some of these youths need to be engaged. Even the women. It was, it's one organization, a JDPC, that when I discovered that the, the IDP camp there, those IDPs, then we wrote to different organizations. I have just one year from one organization, mm. JDPC. That is the, the coordinator, J, uh, Reverend Father Achi. Okay. Very wonderful man. This man sent his team to confirm that yes, the story is not just story. Yeah. He sent his team, went, and they saw that yes, it is true. Out of the number of people, they tried. 41 people, they picked 41 names. Some people have started training. Mm. Some of the youths, they started training and tailoring different skills. Mm. And then they were able to make provision of food. They came with trailer. Oh my God, I was shocked. What father and his team came with? And I was like, God, even the IDPs, they were like, since they've been in this place, that nobody, no organization, no organization, they've never gotten such help. And then I was like, if those people can come like that, other people are out there too. You can come and assist these people. I am not saying that give me, this thing should come through my organization. No. This thing, for them to even see you, it means that they are being loved. Oh, yeah, Seeing new yeah. people coming to meet them, they know that yes, if society has not forgotten them. Mm. So we need to make provision of job, job opportunities for those people. We can't leave them like that. Mm. Especially the youth. Some of these kids, they wake up nothing to eat. Even the clothes to wear. And they were not talking about this the medical. Oh my god. It's not stories. These are reality. Wow, you are watching a program Truth to Power, and it's coming to you right here. And it's a program that is designed to highlight uh, happenings in and around persecuted communities. And today we are looking at those that interface with persons in internally displaced clusters and camp and the experiences is what we are listening to today. I'll come to Triple J. Job Julius just <laughs> In the course of all of this and from your experience and uh, happenings around communities where attacks have happened, would you say that these attacks have some level of religious coloration? Yes, to a very large extent. Okay. It has religious undertones. Mm-hmm. Because, um, well, you see, religion has always been with us from mm. the get go. Mm. And, like, let me say, before colonialism, it wasn't, it wasn't a factor. Yes, it was. But after colonialism, there is that need for divide and rule. Mm. So, these um, identity politics became uh, glorified in order that the colonial system thrives. And as soon as the colonial government left, the elites that took over, they used the same method to garner support from the people. Ethnicity and religious um, coloration. Now, it's very easy, like in the north here, like we have, there has been a number of conflicts and all these conflicts like in Kajuna said has to do with especially in the north has to do with religion. Yeah. Because 
Okay, like there is this uh, 92 Zano Kota food. Zano Kota food prices, yeah. Good. Then there is that, the one that is called in Miss World, um, uh, yes, as well, yes, yes. where Kanas was supposed to host uh, Miss, uh, Miss World, Miss World uh, pageant. Mm. And then from from nowhere, the Muslim people decided that it's against their faith. Yeah. And then they, 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 they decided began to walk into the streets and then killings happened. Yes. Yeah, that's still it's fresh. Still, it's pretty much, it has, it is as much religious as it is. Political, and political, and political, yes, fused together. Because if you look at it, most often than not, these terrorists sadly identify as Fulanis. Yes. Whether we want to be politically correct or not, sadly, mark my word, they sadly identify as Fulanis almost all of the time. It's not to say there are no pockets of other tribes doing this, there are mm. criminals in all tribes and religion. But sadly, these ones, have, these ones that have been happening in the middle belt of Nigeria and northern Nigeria identify as Fulani uh, herders that almost of them are not are also Muslims yes. by and by. So as much as we want to be politically correct and not give it a religious or tribal coloration, it is what it is. Yes, it is what it is. It's the bitter truth. Yeah. Yes. You see, now one more thing again, let me add. You see, these um, these people, yes, they do big membership, pockets of membership in communities. Okay, yes, as, 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 them, yes. yes. As informants. Yeah. Like the the attack on my community. Mm. One of the persons was he's actually right right now, he's actually he, he right today he has been arrested. Good, good. You know, they pick somebody from the community that can guide them to particular houses. Houses where they can community. get Quality yes, to that, that is exactly that is in the in, in the town mm. in the city. Yeah. What would you say is the spread in these communities where these uh, crises happened? Well, uh, within this community, there is the Christian and the Muslim community, like the the Baji, which is the Christian community. It is the who are the aborigines? Who are the origin? Who are the origin of that community? Mm. While there is the Fulani community that are usually transient, mm. always on the move, they are migrants, grazing, migrant yeah. communities. Yes, mm. so they are still there because the the, the entire area immediately they, when they came and invaded the community, they, they expelled the the origins, mm. the, the the Baji communities. Mm. We who now had to leave, who, which are the um, the IDPs that we are attending to okay. at the moment. Okay. So, you know, they left their grains. The, in fact, the, 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 their grain, their grain reserve was plundered. Mm -hmm. Their cattle taken over yeah, by the yeah, air, were rustled by these, mm -hmm. by these uh, um, terrorists. Mm -hmm. So as it is now, that's how it is. However, the reason that led to this um, crisis, crisis, this crisis, is largely, is predominantly economic in the sense that. You could you, you attach religious religiosity to it because sometimes when you want to get support, it's in Nigeria it's easy for you to mobilize support through either ethnic or religious yes. okay. or religious okay. dimension. So when you present that, you have the likelihood of mobilizing of, of accruing a large chunk of support by sympathizers of that ethnicity or okay. that religion. Yeah. So to imagine, like in the east, in the issue of these, um, uh, like for instance, let's let's go back to na, na, the. The, the, the jihad, the nineteen fourteen jihad of Tumandon mm. He says the jihad, largely because of economic reasons, mm. not for religious reasons, mm. because of the Zengali tax, the tax that was the heavy taxation that was on his people, uh, who are largely uh, of the traditional beliefs. Mm. They were non-Muslims of traditional beliefs. Mm. So he felt that they were being extorted economically. Mm -hmm. So he felt because whoever has a, a political control has economic control. Mm -hmm. So he staged that uh, jihad, ex expelled these uh, these ruling elites, took over, and then moved the tradition against the Hausa community, who were the ruling elites then. Mm -hmm. That was how this jihad became established. And that was how the spread of Islam went through across the allied through, through to the to, to the West mm -hmm. as well. So it's always economic. You see, um, like Max and Lenny said, in any, every, every community, whatever happens in every community is linked, is linked to economic reasons. 
Mm. Whatever happens, mm. good about into communism. So that is why it is largely economic. But sometimes for these people to mobilize support, they need religion. Yeah, which part of religion? Exactly. So they are able to achieve yes, their to economic achieve, uh, yeah, pursuits. Yes. Wow. We are getting another truth, and this time around, seeing it from a different perspective that most people are, I would say, our traditional classroom wouldn't teach us. They'll tell us it's something else. But looking at this perspective, can one say that we are far from the truth? You can be the judge, not me. <laughs> now, I'm talking about persons in these IDP camps, the kids, the women, and other displaced persons. How, how would you say the religious spread is? You mean religion? Mm, religion. Okay, yeah. Our project is not meant for a particular religion or a particular tribe. No, it's for everybody who needs support. No, but for this particular IDP is where we are because the truth is we can't go everywhere now mm -hmm. because we don't even have the resources. Mm -hmm. We don't even have the resources. But for the particular place where we are currently, the IDP is where we are. They are mostly Christians. Okay. They are mostly. Yes, they are yeah. Christians. And of course, I've heard people calling. Oh, is it only your program? Is it only for a particular set of people? Is it for a particular location? How do we step further when we don't have what it takes? Hmm. So that is the problem we are having. We hope to go to other places. As a matter of fact, we've been making our plans. We have it. We have the plans on ground. But how do we take the next step? when we don't have the muscles to move further mm -hmm. so where we are at the, at the where we are currently the idp where we are now this is not where we hope to stay alone we need to go beyond that but then we cannot move because we don't have the resources yes wow truth to power is a program and it's one program where that we always say we speak truth to power and the program is supported by truth nigeria a website that's designed to bring you the true story about Nigeria, most especially the persecuted minority groups. And on Truth to Power, we are speaking truth to power all of the time. On the program today, my guests, I would say, have shed so much light, and I have two of them today. The first one is the CEO of Echo Smile Support and Empowerment Initiative. And uh, she's been doing so much about uh, uh so much for and with people living in minority groups and this uh, particularly a uh, cluster of internally displaced persons in kaduna state northwest nigeria and of course job julius jato is also a volunteer with uh, her group and he's also been doing so much and shedding light to some of these issues as he is someone that lives in the community that have separate separately been attacked this will be the size of the program today, but before we do that, we we'll, of course, take your parting shot. I'll start from uh, Julius uh, Jato. What would be your parting shot and advice before we wrap it up today? Well, uh, I think uh, my parting shot would, to a very large extent, dwell on the way forward yeah. to this uh, problem, this crisis. The world has gone beyond grazing reserve or grazing field mm -hmm. what we need is for every community to be sedentary okay every individual should be identified and have an address you see when you make these uh, these cattle whereas to 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 have if you can compare them to to acquire ranch ranch yes they will be compared to dwell there cultivate their hay yeah. the government can assist them to 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 um, so variety of, of, yes, of yes yes so they can they can cultivate and be feeding their cattle, that will be compared to live in peace and harmony with their, with, with, with their neighbors. Yeah. So the issue of this, um, this terrorism will be, will be brought to balance minimum, minimum yeah. you know, and so everybody have the right to live. Mm. We should not for any reason, whether religious, tribal or ethnic, support any form of marginalization or genocide amongst our people. Thank you so very much and our uh, blessing. Well, um, I want to use this opportunity to so say a very big thank you to you and, and to all your team. We really appreciate this opportunity given to us. And I also want to say a very big thank you to JDPC. Yes, thank you so much Reverend Father Achi and his team. 
And I also want to say thank you to Network, um, Nigerian Network Peace Journalists. Uh, we did a program last week on world celebrating World International Peace Day with the displaced children. Mm. Uh -huh. So I want to say thank you. And they supported the kids with uh, some educational materials. So thank you very much. And at the same time, I want to make an appeal to everyone out there. We have a whole lot that we want to do for the displaced people, not only them. It's not just a particular place. We wish to go around all the places where we have people who need support, we need care, but we can't do it alone if you don't support us. So we're making an appeal to please support Echo Smart Support and Empowerment Initiative. Thank That's you. about the size of the program today. I want to sincerely appreciate you all for standing by to watch or listen to us from wherever you are. Remember, this program is proudly supported by Truth Nigeria. Visit truthnigeria.com to get more information about Nigeria and also to watch Truth to Power. My name is Ehis Adon. My guest on the program today has been Blessing Echo Sunday, the CEO of Echo Smile Support and Empowerment Initiative, and of course, to Job Julius Jato, a volunteer with Echo Smile Support and Empowerment Initiative. See you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.